Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. Today I'm going to let you know what I wish I knew before I started tattooing. Hey. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> now that that is over, what I wish I knew before I started tattooing. Um, I started tattooing almost 20 years now oh, ago, and um, when I first got into tattooing, it was out of necessity, actually. I was living in another country, and I kind of needed a cash job um, to get by, um, and I got into it probably for all the wrong reasons. I mean, like when I first started tattooing, it was... I had a different vibe about it when you went in. Um, it was very rare, I mean, especially the shop that I was working at. Uh, the first place I worked at was an absolute disaster. <laughs> it's just, it wasn't good at all. Um, when you would walk in, I mean, the, the types of clientele that we would have, I mean, you would probably not see in most tattoo shops now, you know. Um, we had to deal with a lot of people who are in gangs or on, you know, motorcycle gangs or bikes or, you know. It was like, I guess you considered <clears throat> some of the more unsavory individuals, dangerous individuals inside of um, inside of society, at least you know how they'd be depicted in the, the media. I never had a problem with any of the people that I, I tattooed or worked with. I mean, unless I did a, a tattoo that didn't really work out, which you know your, your first couple years tattooing, regardless of what you're going to do, it's it's going to turn out bad. I wish I knew that before I started tattooing. Um, uh, it, it was different, right? So, I mean, the types of tattoos, because these people like lived in a, you know, a certain way or had a certain lifestyle, um, what they would ask me to do is, is kind of not what I've been doing anymore. I mean, I used to do so many skulls and tribal. I, at the time when I started tattooing, koi fish and kanji was just like the jam, right? I remember doing kanji for an entire day, and I don't like write that language. So I couldn't tell you if what I was doing was correct or not, but I was getting paid, and that was kind of how we looked at it, right? You weren't you weren't really an artist, uh, you, were, you were a tattooer. And so I remember at some of the shops that I initially worked at, the, the people that were there, in, you know, the first, I think maybe three shops that I've worked at, the people who, who were there, like half of them didn't know how to draw. You know, they were good tattooers though. And, and so seeing that when I was coming up kind of gave me, I guess, a different vibe than what I would see nowadays when I go into a shop. So <clears throat> um, I guess like that would be the first thing, you know, like before I started tattooing, I wish I would have, you know, one, uh, <laughs> I wish I knew you didn't <laughs> need to be an artist. Um, you didn't need to be. And I mean, even nowadays, you don't need to be an artist to be a tattooer. And, you know, the more I'm doing this, I notice like, that you have to be really good at tracing. You know, that's, that's kind of the foundation for tattooing. The tattoo, when you're doing it, I mean, some people out there are these, you know, freehand designs, they'll just do like a couple marks on you you know, with a, a marker or something and do these absolutely wild, wild designs. Um, like Robert Hernandez, have you ever seen his stuff? Holy cow, right? Um, it'd be like an artist, but I mean, realistically, when you get into making these designs, even those people who are world-class, they're still kind of doing the same thing over and over and over again. So it's not like they're being adventurous, you know? I don't think that anyone who does tattoos should, or I mean, if they're, you know, especially like maybe aged or been doing this a little while, uh, even would go in with no idea of what they're going to do and just be like, let's see what it turns out. Because I mean, that's bad. The first five years you're in tattooing, you're going to end up doing it. <laughs> you're going to lose a lot of friends. That's <laughs> number two. What I wish I knew before I started tattooing, <laughs> you're going to lose some friends. Um, yeah, yeah, lose friends. So <laughs> this was a big one. I didn't know about this. So I, anyone I knew, I was like, you want a tattoo? Because I just wanted to practice. I wanted to practice. I wanted to practice. I wanted to get good. And the first year that you tattoo, everything you do is bad. I don't care if you're like the best artist in the world. The first year that you do tattoos, if you look back on it and you're still in the industry 10 years later, you're going to look at those tattoos and be like, woof a doofa, right? Like it's just, it's not good. So, um, yeah, you're gonna lose friends. At the same time, I mean, you might make some during this, but those friends that you lose, <laughs> that's personal experience, 20 years later, they're gonna be like, I, you wanna fix this? <laughs> so be prepared that everything that you commit to when you first start, and it doesn't matter if you move countries or across the you know place where you live, like, hey, other sides of the world, they'll find you, and they'll be like, hey, you wanna fix this? I still get phone calls 
from some of the first tattoos that I've done where people, it's a joke now because, you know, it's been so long, but I mean, still I'll get phone calls randomly and be like, hey, you gonna fix this? It's just, ugh. It makes you feel yucky, right? Because if you know, like if I knew back then what I know now, I wouldn't have done half the shit I was doing. That's just common sense. But I didn't have anyone telling me when I got into it, you should do or don't do this, or this is how you need to do this, or this is how you have to learn, or these are the guidelines, rules, you know, this is the, the goals that you're aiming for at the end of the day, month, year, whatever. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing I wish I would have known um, when I started tattooing is uh, you don't, I can't multitask, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't get to choose what, huh, oops, put that line in there too quick, eh? Uh, what people get. So, this is the other thing too. When I was first fed, you know, the idea of being a tattooer was just like, well, you do a design and someone comes up and get it. Because like, we used to, I worked in a flash shop. I've worked in, I don't know, a dozen flash shops over the years. I have all the racks of artwork and stuff. I come in and just be like, Cool. So maybe like, what should I get? I'm like, get that. And it just was a different vibe, you know. As as things started to move over towards a more custom, and I'm, I use that term loosely because I don't think there's a lot of custom artists out there. I think that there's a lot of flash artists who <laughs> don't know that they're flash artists because they've been trained to create flash art by using and duplicating Google designs, which isn't bad. I mean, like, who cares? If the person's happy with the design, it's like that. But if your ego is so inflated because you're custom and you utilize that as a sales point, I think that's move. Um, not smart. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That, realistically, you don't get to choose what people get, right? You can have the best idea in the world. I have, I have literally down underneath my drafting table, I have this like 80 gallon tote that's filled with artwork that no one's ever gotten. And some of it's huge. I mean, I've drawn body suits, sleeves, you know, like multiple, like multiple, multiple sitting pieces uh, for people. They paid me their artwork and you know, they get it. And they're just like, well, I didn't, I don't want it anymore. This is cool artwork. You're like, well, here you can have the artwork cause you paid for it. And they're like, nah. And it makes you wonder, <laughs> right? If uh, all that hard work, hundreds of hours in some cases, you know, I'd done this stuff, like did they actually not like it or was there a financial hardship? Or, there's all of these questioning things that were going on. And, you know, and if I knew at the beginning that I wouldn't really have as much of a, an input on this stuff, which I think it's only been about the past five years I really understood and grasped that idea that it's not about me, right? It's about the person. <clears throat> if I knew that I may have approached tattooing differently, I would have maybe, focused more on technique before style uh, much sooner, you know, and really tried to focus on understanding communication between myself and the client, as opposed to trying to figure out how to sell my designs, which I think is, is not a, a positive way to do this. Like I'm not a car salesman, right? I'm not even an artist. What I am is a tradesperson. Someone comes to me because they can't do it. And literally it's so easy to get a tattoo machine now. You can go on Amazon, 45 bucks, you can get a setup, you can give yourself a tattoo. I don't recommend that at all, <laughs> but you can. The reason why people go and see tattooers is just because either A, one, they don't want to, or B, they, they understand that they're not gonna do as good of a job as you who do the tattoo. So they come and they pay you money. But still, they're gonna choose what they want, all right? Let's see if we can keep this one rolling. <coughs> I'm still a little ill and I'm, I'm lactose intolerant too. I drank a big old cup of milk before I came out here and I have no idea why, but my stomach is absolutely wretched. So I apologize for my burping and wiping my face a lot. I just get itchy. Um, well, it's another thing I wish I would have known. All right, <clears throat> this one, we'll do this. Okay, well, this one, you get the clientele you get. Initially, when I first started tattooing, the shop I was working at was like, we're rock stars, you know, we get to tattoo all these fancy people, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're judging people on their looks past what they're actually getting on their bodies. And so, you know, being you know, like 19, 20 years old, I was like, this is rad. I just get to tattoo all these beautiful people and I get to be a part of the beautiful people club. And that wasn't what, you just get tattoo people, right? It's not that you just can be like cool and you get to craft all these cool pictures where people can, you know, wow, you tattooed that person. Yeah, I'm cool. It doesn't matter. Like rock stars don't look up to tattooers. They don't envy them. It's just bullshit. Like, 
Humility, being humble, and being good at your job is what's gonna get you the clientele that everyone else is gonna be fawning over. But if you're really just good at your job, it doesn't matter if they're rich, they're famous, and they have money. You're just doing your job, you're doing it well, and you're doing that same service for every person that you work with, not reserving it for somebody that you don't know that can get you more cred, right? That took me a little while to try and figure out when I first started tattooing. I wish I knew about it before. I, you know, I think all these things just keep on coming back down to, you know, knowing myself better before I got into doing this, this type of work and really trying to understand like how I could be better, not only with understanding the value, like the utility of the design that the person's getting, um, past just, you know, being better technically, you know, technical, technical competency is really difficult to achieve, which probably lead us to the next point here inside of an industry, right? Number five, this is what I wish I would have known. People <laughs> who, man, I'm hoping, not picking up that squeaking. <laughs> we'll go. All right, okay, people who tattoo don't really know <laughs> what they're doing. Oh, geez. See, I told you I can't multitask, just gotta be patient uh, with me. I can't even type. I can't. This is typing. Uh, I don't really know what they are doing. I can't. I just can't. I'm not going to do it anymore. I know it's a long time. I shouldn't have written something that long, but whatever, right? Um, okay, people who tattoo don't really know what they're doing. Um, I know this is like kind of a harsh thing to say about the industry, but, uh, you know, th this is just what's up here. Um, I'm not trying to like say that every tattoo or this, I don't want to be overgeneralizing anything, but in my experience, the people I've met, when I've asked questions, and I, I traveled all over the place to try and learn. I spent like a decade chasing down people who knew stuff, working at their shop for, you know, a week, two weeks, six months, a year, whatever, to try and find people who knew stuff about tattooing. Cause I really wanted to know why I was doing what I was doing. Um, it all started with like, I did, I did, I thought I was a good tattooer. And I was, <laughs> and I got a job at this shop that was, it was way above my pay grade. I, sh I shouldn't have been there. Um, but I had spent a lot of time crafting a really good portfolio and not really being honest with the people that were hiring me. Uh, I walked in there, I did one style of tattooing. They were looking for an all arounder and uh, they threw me a picture to tattoo. It was a, a shamrock. It was about this big. This is like circa 2010, something like that. Um, and they, they just wanted it gray shaded and I didn't know how to do it. And it's kind of crazy to throw that out there, right? Because I mean, that's, that's some fundamental level stuff. But I worked as a realism artist, right? I didn't even own a liner, I think, when I went to work. I went to work at that place. I just had a bunch of fucking mags. I didn't know what I was doing with. I had like 12 tones of wash. That, you know, it's just like, it was stupid. I didn't know how to tattoo. I felt like I knew how to tattoo because sometimes it felt right. So I, I lied a lot and I kind of deluded myself into thinking that, you know, you know a lot. I, I said, I tried to do this tattoo, I failed at it. One of the best tattooers on the planet gave me a critique and it was, it was murder. <laughs> he hurt my feelings so bad and brought me right back down to ground level. And he, like a little butt hurt about this, of course, cause your ego gets just absolutely demolished in two sentences. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was great, right? Because I had never been told in the industry, this like for a decade, right? That I, I sucked. Everyone was always giving me helpful tips to try and make me better. And none of the stuff was working. And this is what started that like really, really like deep need for me to start traveling and finding more knowledge, right? As I traveled though, and I went and met people and I asked them to describe their process, they, it just kept coming down to the same things, right? It's the type of needles you use, it's the type of ink you use, it's the type of machine you use, it's the type of seat you use, it's the type of lighting you use. It's all of these things that had literally nothing to do with technique. Um, and some people are gonna say, yes, needles do matter. Yeah, I don't agree. You know, pigments matter, these ones, ah, I don't agree with you either, right? If you know what you're doing, you can make something look good, right? If we have a, a person who builds houses and they don't have power tools, right? And you have a person who does have power tools. Is there gonna be a difference in skill? Maybe, we'll see at the finished product. If the person with the lack of power tools builds an entire house with just a bunch of handmade things and it comes out better quality than the person who has all the fancy stuff, 
you're gonna have to say that there's a difference in skill there, right? If it comes out the same, and there's a discrepancy in the tools that are being used, you're still gonna have to give it up to the person who didn't have a lot of automation. And I know that people are gonna be like, oh, it's not the same, but I mean, like, what is a tattoo machine? It's, it's something that makes a motion like this so that we don't do this. I just had to cut it and restart this because I, I don't I don't know what was going on with my my brain here. Hang on, let me grab my pen again. Um, you know I'm. You know we'll we'll go back to the five is the thing that I had said right. Yup. Before I, I went and tangentialized all over the place there, we're, we're just going to cut in that card with the nice calm ocean scene. It'll be fine. Everyone's going to be like, "What happened?" I just. Don't worry, it's because I went on a rant that I probably shouldn't have. I started just laughing at myself and I didn't even remember what the hell I was talking about. But regardless, the, the issues at hand with all this stuff is, you know, when, when people claim to know a lot and they don't, and they sell the idea that they know a lot and they don't, it starts to detract value from not only the experience, but from any future generations actually picking up on stuff. And I don't know that... This is probably the time. I'll, I'll do a video on at least like my thought about you know the past two, three decades and what's happened in tattooing to get it to the place where it's at now, which I think there's a lot of good and bad things about it. But I mean, we can just kind of leave it to that. Like if, if you are a tattooer and you're seeking knowledge, you got to develop tools and ways to like discern what's right and what's wrong when people are telling you stuff, right? And if you don't have that ability, you can't really critically think very well. You may be in for surprise, like I was for the first bit of time that I was actually doing tattooing, that what people tell you is, is fake, right? And I don't know if it's malicious or not, I couldn't say. I don't, I don't tend to think that it is. I, I think that people actually want to feel like they know because this is how they've been trained to know, um, but they don't know. So um, if you're seeking validation, I wish I would have known like when I first started tattooing, you know, that I'm not going to get good feedback and it's going to be really hard to get any real understanding unless I put in all the work myself. I can't rely on those around me to really give me the knowledge that I'm seeking. So that'll be it. So yeah, I erased everything off the board. I wasn't just going to do anything else. I was like, ah, let's try it again <laughs> because that's what I do. Okay. What's number six? I'm going to take maybe a pause here and think about that one too, but we don't even have to. It got really deep, like kind of like, you know, esoteric or whatever on this. I had like an existential crisis on camera about thinking back into the past and <laughs> what I wish I would have known. How about this? All right. Number six. Uh, travel's awesome. When I first started tattooing, I thought I had to find a shop, park my butt and work for 15 years because that's what everyone said I had to do. Um, and... I was thinking it was after like the first year and a half or two years of me tattooing, I ended up moving. And um, I moved a lot up until I was about like 35 or so. Um, <clears throat> I ended up moving, it was like this new clientele. It was this new group of people. I mean, past the fact, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I was having people still drive up and, you know, get tattoos fixed for me and stuff, but um, because I wasn't good. <laughs> but uh, it was really cool, right? Because there's just like this new vibe, this new place. There's this new group of people, you know? and. I always found like being in shops, you have people who work with you, you have people who work against you, and you have people who drive you, you know? Um, and some of the shops I've worked at, it was always a competition base, and you're trying to shark clients from each other just so you can get fed because there's not enough money because it's a small town and there's like a large per capita, you know, presence of tattoo artists or something. And then, you know, other ones where everyone is just super nice. I, I was in this place in Iowa, in Sioux City, uh, and the <laughs> This person who owns this shop is still one of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire life. She was just awesome. Eva, what up? Um, everyone in the town was super chill. Like I, every shop, people, like everyone was just getting along. It was really, really weird. It's just like, oh, you want to get, you know, Puerto Rico, see this dude, or you know, you're gonna get travel work, go see this one. And everyone was just like, it was like one big shop that was set in this town. I don't, I don't know if it's still like that. But I mean, at the time it was off. Uh, it was awesome. I, it, it was, well, it was off as well. <laughs> I wasn't accustomed to that. Uh, and then every once in a while you're gonna find a shop uh, where you, you move into it and there's just like one or two people there that are always just killing it, right? And you look at them and you're like, 
all right, I can do that, you know. And you'll hang out, maybe become friends, and those people are the ones who are gonna drive you to succeed and do better. If they give you good advice, I mean, yep, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but past that, I mean, travel is just awesome. It, it, it's it's uh, one of the benefits of being a tattooer, because if you're a good tattooer, you don't have to be great. You just have to be consistently good. Like, if people ask you to do something, you can do it, and the shop owner that hires you never has to worry about you doing anything. The world is your oyster. Um, <clears throat> it's another reason why I became an all-rounder. I just want to be a practice artist, is that I could go anywhere and get a job. Um, and that's, I'm not like bragging, like I can go anywhere. No, it's just, I'm, I'm not a great tattooer. I'm not world class. I'm just consistently good. Like, you know what you're gonna get with me. You never have to guess, you know? I, a lot of people like my tattoos, I, I think it's great, but I'm looking at stuff and it's just technically like their sound. That's it. I'm not worried about everything else. The design aspect, on average, especially with the tattoos I'm doing nowadays, is truly just a collaboration with the person that I'm working with. So I don't even really care about artwork anymore. I care about customer interaction, their experience, the outcome of the tattoo, what they get, and that they are involved the whole time. So when you're working like that, you have to be able to do everything, right? And when you do that, meeting people who you get to work on with that process, oh, it's just awesome. I mean, even now we have um, a friend of mine who will do like this six, seven hour round trip to go to a shop to go and work, you know, like a day a week or maybe two days a week or something. It's, it's insane, right? We're doing like three, 400 miles, you know, like 500K a day <clears throat> just, just to go and work at the shop because it's awesome. The people up there are just they're the best people on the planet. It's wild. And I, you know who you are if you're watching, you would not deny that. Those people that we work on are just fantastic. So it's cool. If, if you're new and you're getting into this, this is a great way for you to start getting your name out there as well. You know, you want to go out, get involved, maybe get like, you know, a larger clientele, start getting a regional footprint, maybe a national footprint, maybe an international footprint. Travel. It's, it's great. You may feel awkward the first couple times you do it, but once you settle into travel lifestyle, it's, 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 it's awesome. Um, well, let's do one more because I think that's enough. I think, uh, I probably talked enough today. My videos just keep getting longer and longer and I don't know. I guess I'm getting more comfortable sitting here talking to myself. That's fun. Um, last one. Um, okay. Oh, last one. Number seven. It takes loads of practice. Um, you're going to hear stories when you start tattooing. If you're getting into doing tattoos about these people who have this amazing tattoo IQ. Like they just picked up a machine and they started going. And yeah, I've, I've met some people like that. I've talked to some people. I've heard about, I don't know, thousands of tattooers who were just, you know, godsends when they first picked up the machine. But I mean, for the rest of us, <laughs> we got to work real hard to get good. You know, there's a, there's a very, very, very strong chance that you'll never be great. So you got to love what you're doing and you got to just try to be good, you know. Be, be the best that you can be at what you're doing as opposed to trying to fit into that paradigm of what's being pushed out on social media or on the web or, you know, even when you walk into shops, you know. Um, a lot of the artists that I meet now are very insecure, at least in their body positioning, the way that they talk. I mean, every once in a while you'll find somebody who's just like double gunning everyone. Um, but a lot of them are very reserved, right? They don't want to interact as much they're, they're kind of guarded they're very much just into their process they put their headphones on and they just they want to be left alone at work and that's that's fine right but it's showing you a weakness in your ability to do your job it's not just about being an artist right like we're tattooers and tattooers are psychiatrists artists <laughs> surgeons you know like the list goes on like you're doing everything all the time and you can't just have like one client with one skin tone that's one age group for the rest of your life you know you've got to branch out and you've got to try new things and you've got to do a lot of thinking and a lot of practice to get consistently good and it's hard especially because if people yep if they don't know what they're telling you you can feel left out to dry and it's not it's not fair Right, so the only way that you're gonna get better is to take the time to practice. You practice, a lot of people just say like, you gotta draw, you gotta paint, you gotta do this stuff. Which, yeah, I, I, I concur. Like, art is very real in the like pre-stages of the tattoo. Uh, consultations, art drafting, you're gonna be passing it back and forth to get approvals. Before you get into the tattoo, yeah, art is very important, but it's not the whole job, you know? 
the whole job is so much more. You know, if I have a client who's just lost a child, you know, to cancer, the child is four or five years old, the whole family wants to come in and they want to stand over your back, you know, hold hands, pray, and really be together while you're doing a portrait of this, you know, child who's passed away on the mother's back, which I've had to deal with that before. It was, it was intense. Um, then you deal with it. If you have people who want to come in and they get, you know, a tattoo that maybe you're not comfortable with, you know, how are you going to deal with that? It takes practice. There's a lot of emotional, you know, like, I don't know, I would say strength, but I mean, just like fortitude that you have to develop as a tattooer, right? I, and I wish I would have known that. I thought that everyone who came to get a tattoo was just partying, you know? The first shop I worked at, it literally was that. People just get off of a cab and be like, woo, come in and get, you know, Cherry Creek, something this big. You've been tattooing a lot, little while, you know about Cherry Creek, those are money, right? Uh, you just do this all day, you know, bop, 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 bop. Maybe a Bartel every now and then, who knows? Um, yeah, but it's just gonna take practice. And if you're not good at something or if it makes you feel uncomfortable, and I mean, not uncomfortable to the point that you're like, you are you know, suffering from this, but if it's uncomfortable because like, I'm not good at this and I don't wanna, you gotta go do it. You gotta attack that. That's gonna be your first thing that you gotta like try to take care of, right? And it's gonna take a lot of practice to get better at it. I was a horrible illustrator. I did not know how to draw when I started tattooing. I could do portraits. That's why I did realism. Um, and I didn't know how to draw. So I spent literal years, which is I think why I do a lot of flowers now, drawing flowers, because I didn't know how to draw a flower. I'd, I'd go and I'd cut a rose up and I'd hold it and I would draw it from what I see and then I'd turn it and I'd draw it. And I want to understand the anatomy of this stuff. I'd, I've drawn, I've drawn so many flowers. <laughs> you can ask me to draw something, boom, I can do it now on paper, right in front of the client. We can have a nice fun time sketching with Sharpies on our arm. Um, but that took a lot of practice. You know, same thing, if you're not good at doing traditional style tattoos, sit down and do some, right? Learn about how they were done. Go talk to somebody who specializes in this stuff. Pick their brain. Not about how to do the tattoo, right? But about how the tattoo was done before. Learn how people used to approach the design stuff and really get into their head. It'll help, right? And practice, practice, practice. If you're not good at talking to people, figure out how to talk to people. That's an integral part of this. If you are better at communicating, and you can talk to people and you can pull the information out of them that they want. You can improve the quality and experience of their tattoo just by talking. Like that's a part of the job. Um, if you have no other way of communicating rather than just sending texts, because that's the only way you're going to feel comfortable doing this, that's fine. But let the person that you know uh, that you're working with, that this is how you're going to have to communicate because you have anxiety or maybe there's other you know, issues that it should never withhold the person from being able to do what they want to do. But you always have to make sure that like you're communicating it effectively so that you can feel safe in your space, right? At the same time, practice. Anyways, I think that's probably enough. I think we're hitting like a half hour. I've been talking forever anyways. So I mean, if you watched it this long, <laughs> rock and roll. Um, that's really nice, you know? Um, give me a comment, see, like, let me know what you think. If we need to talk a little bit more about this, I think it's, it's really important for people to know when they get into the industry, what to expect. Um, and watching TV shows is not going to give you the information that you need, right? Um, anyways, that's it. This is Ryan from bettertattooing.com, signing off.